It's a real pleasure to present to you uh, oil and gas industry experts and people from where I experience here uh, on a topic that is of utmost importance uh, in the current scenario. In the next 15 to 18 minutes, I want to talk about enterprise asset management with a focus on reliability and utilization. Reliability is the one topic that keeps coming up on top when it is linked to the risk of an asset. So it's always uh, an area where in order to make sure that your assets are performing as predicted and they are safe, the reliability plays an important role. Take the example of aerospace industry. Uh, number of accidents, air crashes have come down significantly just because how the reliability has been built into right from their design of the product and now doing the operations. When aircraft is now flying, the aircraft engine keeps continuously transmitting its cell condition and the moment it lands in one next airport, you already know what the stress is going on and anything that needs to be fixed, you already have crews ready with all the information, all the tools that is required to fix it so that aircraft can leave the gates on time for the next journey. Another interesting uh, learning from the aircraft industry is that uh, you would have seen a lot of aircraft investigation uh, examples where uh, one, of, one of them was very interesting for me, uh, especially uh, where uh, when the aircraft crashed and it was found that after long investigation, the reason was sheer failure of a bolt in the rudder. And the investigation led into finding out actually how, who has manufactured it? Who was the technician that actually fixed this into the aircraft for a service center? And then what was the quality check done on that board before it is approved for use in the aircraft? It was found that these were the spurious or the second grade boards that got into the ecosystem of the aircraft. And that investigation went further to find out which all of the airlines today are still carrying that boat on their airplane. And to everybody's surprise, the Air Force One also had those boats. So what it tells us is this industry is able to go back, trace down a problem, and then learn from it and immediately act upon it to fix across all assets they have in the field. Can you think about that? in our industry today. That's a caution. So the criticality of assets performance in the field is so important that you would like to bring in some of those learnings from across the industry and adopt. Again, can I bring everything that the airline industry does into my operations? No. But we cannot refuse everything from outside not to come inside. So that's the insight we'd like to keep in. That I would like to go deeper into the concept of little bit. Uh, I'm not going to give the full lecture of these topics here, but just to give you uh, enough insight into the, how the reliability is uh, measured, managed. So, in the keynote speak, Mr. Mr. Rustam Moji was talking about uh, definitely the risk in our current operations have been increasing and the pressure on the return on capital has been always there. And with the current market condition, it is even more critical. So there is always a constant pressure to optimize the cost on capital. At the same time, during the operations, how do I ensure that my cost of operations goes down, which is basically OPEX and your uh, energy cost and then efficiency of operations there itself. On the other side, you have the output that you need to maximize, which is a direct function of availability of the assets, reliability of the assets. So these are two conflicting aspects. Unless you take care of your assets well, 
you can actually be compromising the reliability and availability of the assets. And even more, if you want to optimize the cost too much, you're probably hitting the risk button anytime. So how do I balance these aspects within my operations is the key. Bit of insight into the techniques. If I could predict, I think I can take back the same experience of airline industry. If there's a problem developing, can I see it? If I can look into the asset, or even take an example of car. Today, modern cars can tell you how things are performing, and you have a lot of uh, insight into the, you don't need to have a mechanic to tell you. You know car itself is telling so much about its health condition. So are you able to model, based upon the current health condition of the asset, how it is going to deteriorate in its life? And how long it can perform the function without compromising the, uh, the core function of it or without impacting the safety? So that ability to predict and forecast its performance based upon the current condition and operating conditions will lead into something what we call as uh, prediction of the uh, reliability and uh, uh, you can find out how it can fail. Then combined to that, if a particular equipment fails, what's the impact? Now again, um, we all drive cars. So if you could predict a brake is going to fail, you know what the impact is. But if you can tell the wiper blade is going to be dysfunctional, of course you can live with that. So impact of the failure is an important element in assessing what happens when an asset is due for failure. So with these functions, we would like to understand how we want to optimize our maintenance and reduce the cost is the key. The another important element is real-time condition monitoring. I think we talked about earlier example. In, in, in fact, in oil and in gas industry, many of the assets are already, especially the high-end ones, are monitored on real time. The concept we are talking about here is, can I take this into a much larger network of assets? For example, uh, you have a large uh, gas pipeline network, maybe in Alaska, the remote locations uh, going across, and then you have a compressors that needs to be running reliably to pump the gas. And since you don't have energy nearby, you probably have your own uh, turbines generating power and supplying that. So you actually, you are also owning a utility next to it. A failure on a utility side or a failure on a compressor side is again a problem for you. To fix anything, you probably had to fly down on a helicopter and fix that. And guess what? First to find out what went wrong, you might have to make another trip to fix it. So what if you could get the information from there, monitor the condition of asset in real time, take compressors performance parameters and being able to predict. And this is what we, what we see is something that is getting into the ecosystem and we can actually take advantage of that. With that, I have one example case study where we have implemented part of this concept and actually real benefit has been realized. This is a success story. Uh, this is a refinery success story where um, a customer had uh, done a benchmark internally. Solomon uh, Consulting was done and they found out that pretty much they were not at the most efficient of, uh, way of performance. Their uh, OPEX was high and also the turnaround time during the shutdown was also longer. So when we did consulting and then went into the details of their operations, we pretty much found that as any normal, they had normal maintenance routines, but also during the turnaround, you would take up pretty much all the equipments for maintenance so that you want to be safe. So when the plant comes back again into operations, you would not want to see any failures. So it is, it's, it's understandable because you, you want to hold them accountable if something goes wrong after the plant comes into operation. So you will always have a tendency to do over maintenance. We constituted a team of uh, experts, uh, corrosion experts and the functional experts uh, and the data experts uh, to go into their organization. And also one important aspect was, if at all we want to go and change the way in which they currently maintain and manage, it's a big change from their side. 
you can always have a theory and concepts on one side, but an implementation, I think you heard it from um, customs uh, presentation. Any change you want to bring in, you need to bring the people on board first. So in this example also, it was very similar, where we took long enough time in the beginning just to make sure that they understand the concept that we are talking about, but more importantly, they believe in it. So we had long uh, workshops with the key people who were supposed to now then take it to the uh, next level. Uh, we had a training with, with them for six weeks, and then we had a departmental training. Uh, it cuts across multiple departments. Uh, we took the maintenance department, inspection department, health and safety department, process department, technology department. So uh, they were all need to be involved. In fact, you won't believe when we had a first meeting and we called reliability centered maintenance, look what? Only maintenance department team turned up, even though invitation was sent to all the departments, other departments didn't come. So later on, we actually started calling that as reliability centered, uh, reliability centered management. We changed maintenance to management just to make sure that people don't confuse it's only maintenance job, so it's not my job. So you could go down into every level to see that how do you want to bring these departments together for one common goal. So what we did, uh, as I explained the consequence of the failure in a, a car example, the similar thing we applied here onto the refinery. You, you took the entire PNID diagram of the refinery, uh, we could create a complete uh, map of a corrosion loops that's called. Um, where based upon the mode of failure, you could actually loop, loop, identify the loops, and then superimpose on that all the inspection data of the static equipments. Uh, it could be thickness or a weld condition. So bring that information onto that. It will tell you the health condition of that particular corrosion loop. So you carry out on the across the loops. Similarly, for the rotary equipments, you do the health set condition, uh, its performance history, and the current condition. Once we did that exercise, by taking the data from the past history, as well as any missing data, we could go and do inspection and gather that information. The consequence of the failure was an important aspect. Here, our own experts had a lot of understanding about what will happen if something fails, but also we took significant amount of input from the people on the ground, from the customer people, so that we could really arrive at something they can believe in, that what will happen. And we tried to make it simple and convert the, all the consequences. It could be health hazard, it could be environmental impact, production loss, but put them into a, finally convert into a number uh, that could be mapped onto a graph. So with that, actually you could arrive at how the assets will span out onto the system. In this case, we used the analytical tool. Uh, this was a, a Meridium tool we had used because customer, we, we did have a choice of tools available, but we picked up the Meridium and gone ahead with the implementation. So finally, when we did this whole exercise, what came out was um, on one refinery, this is one refinery, uh, we had covered actually two refineries. You could get that only 3.3% of the assets which were in the extreme critical range, and then you have around 30% of the assets which are next level of importance. And more than 20% or close to 20% of the assets were actually very safe. It means probably, if you just ask people to maintain, they would have picked up all of them. So we took a decision after studying that 32% of the vessels need not be opened. So you, you can inspect from the outside, but if you open them, it's a significant amount of work and it takes a long time. But also it could be a potential candidate for any health hazard or accident. So if you don't do maintenance, you are anyway safe. So we, we do, took the decision of uh, taking out those equipments and also close to 14% heat exchangers were not opened up. End result, there was a reduction of uh, turnaround time by two days. So they used to take around 23 days, we could bring it down to 21 days. And that gave $9 million benefit because it's a huge asset, it's sitting idle. So you can imagine how much the impact can be if you could bring in the knowledge of scientific approach into practice. The big if is the people. The technology exists, but if you want to bring into your ecosystem, you need to bring people along in that journey and then make sure that it is sustainable. 
because it's not a one time job every turn around you need to go through the whole process the quality of the data that comes in has to be of the same quality so that you can rely upon the output otherwise sometimes you could be even compromising the safety of the plant operations so these are the risky areas where unless your process and the people are really brought up to the level of sustaining that these approaches will actually end up in failures so with that uh, this customer uh, now after implementing the uh, rbi rcm uh, is putting into the process of real time condition monitoring of data sets um, especially the cracker uh, unit uh, compressors uh, and uh, blowers uh, which are very critical if they fail we have huge problem uh, those are now being under uh, real time monitoring of the assets which we are currently doing the pilot there so what does that involve uh, i'll come to this part basically what it involves is a uh, concept of connecting assets with a sensory ability some of the new assets would be already having the capability because now more and more modern assets are having that capability but some of the assets which would require retrofitting you could do that with with some amount of investment and also the whole new ecosystem being been built now uh, like for example in ge um, they are building some of these uh, i happen to see one of them very interesting uh, something called cage um, which uh, has an ear drum and also uh, electromagnetic uh, listener so this ear drum uh, which can catch the vibrations and electromagnetic pulses this cage can go and sit deep into the sea and listen to your subsea structures the vibrations coming from various equipments and actually it can distinguish the vibrations from various equipments and also the electromagnetic uh, waves generated out of electricity flow within the equipment will give you some insights so this is in addition to the already sensored subsea structure gives you a completely new insight into the operations and actually can increase your predictability of performance as well as sometimes you can detect the leaks that, that can be catastrophic uh, at a much 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 higher degree of confidence so that's what we are looking at as an ability to sen sense the data and of course putting that into a communication network it has to be reliable and big data platform uh, uh, for storing this is the historian data uh, you want put there and then whole range of analytics and this is where the domain plays into role where the equipment characteristics and performance and then developing algorithm to predict the failures you can even automate to an extent that you can actually send out a, a work order if it has you have a good confidence enough to generate the uh, work order through the uh, maintenance system with that i would like to summarize the return on the capital is a very interesting topic but it is uh, lies in optimizing the cost and risk the ecosystem for real time condition monitoring is evolving today and i think we all can benefit out of that so adopting these principles into the organization is less of a technology challenge but important aspect is the people change management with that i would like to conclude my presentation thank you very much